Good afternoon, everyone. Buonasera. Welcome. Benvenuti a tutti. I'm Tiziana Cervesato. I'm the executive director of the Italian Film Festival of Minneapolis, St. Paul. I am super, super happy to welcome you all here for the sixth and last live film discussion uh, with our filmmakers for this 12th edition of the Italian uh, Film Festival. Today we have the great pleasure to have with us uh, Doriana Monaco, uh, director of Agarma, Paolo Giulierini, director of the National Archaeological Museum of Naples, as well as Rachel McGarry, associate curator at the Minneapolis Institute of Art, who will help me moderate this discussion. And pretty soon, we should also have Antonella Di Nocera, a producer of Agama, who will be joining the conversation. Um, I would also like to say that Tommaso Camarano, our artistic director of the Italian Film Festival, couldn't be here with us today. Uh, but he is nonetheless very excited to uh, give the opportunity to our audience uh, to discuss the beautiful uh, document, documentary Agama um, today. And we are indeed very honored to bring Agama for the first time uh, in the US. Um, Agama premiered at the 2020 uh, Venice International Film Festival uh, for the Giornate degli Autori. And Tommaso and myself would like to personally thank uh, Gaia Furrer, uh, artistic director of the Giornata degli Autori, uh, for sharing with us our admiration for um, the documentary Agama. Uh, before we start, I would like to take this opportunity again to thank everyone who has made this festival uh, a reality, um, and especially uh, our uh, partner, the Film Society of Minneapolis St. Paul as well as all of our sponsors, and in particular, NOC Inc., uh, the Instituto Italiano di Cultura in Chicago, and Luigi Bernardi and Arcadia. So um, you are currently all muted, and that's to ensure the quality of the sound for the discussion. And the way this is gonna work is that Rachel and myself will do some introductory questions to our guests today. Uh, and then we'll give the word to you. Uh, but from the beginning, please feel free to type your questions directly in the, in the chat. And before I give the word to Rachel, um, it is my pleasure uh, to read the bio of Doriana Monaco to you. So Doriana Monaco um, was born in Benevento, which is close to Naples. She studied archeology span and art history at the University of Naples, Federico II. In 2014, she worked, on the, uh, she worked as the assistant director on the Eduardo De Angelis film Perez um, that we screened at our festival in 2016. She uh, directed her first two short films in 2015, Anatomia di un pensiero triste and Laziest Girl in Town. In 2016, she joined the film app uh, Atelier del Cinema del Reale in Ponticelli uh, by Leonardo di Costanzo. And during that time, she wrote and directed the documentary Chrono Chronopios, uh, which was selected for the Corso Salani Award at the 2017 Trieste Film Festival. So without further ado, it is my pleasure to uh, now give the word to Rachel McGarry, uh, Associate Curator at the uh, Minneapolis Institute of Art. Thank you. Good afternoon and buonasera in, in Italy. Um, Doriana and Paolo, it is such a privilege to have you here today. Welcome. Thank you so much. for being. And uh, congratulations on the beautiful film and the beautiful museum. Um, and I just have to begin with comments about the film, Doriana. I have to say for a person myself who spends most of my wakers in, in a museum for work and for what I love about this film is how you really bring the music to life. Um, it's, it's a breathing space, place in your film. And I love timeless characters kind of preside over the bustling activity that goes on in the museum, be it the delicate conservation tasks, the heavy lifting of sculpts, um, all of the, the research and, and things that you capture as the film um, goes on. And, um, and I love also how you, uh, 
bring in the old transparencies in photography to show um, how the galleries at the Museo Nazionale, uh, Archaeological Nazionale, have changed over time and have evolved over time, which makes the point that the ancients have aged very little in that hundred and years of, of history, which is remarkable. Space has become decluttered and, and light filled, and the, but the, the stars look on throughout, and it's just, it's really wonderful. And then you have um, the galleries are activated by all sorts of activities in, in people singing, performing concerts, um, practicing Tai Chi, drawing. And one of my favorite moments is when a contemporary light installation um, and music activate the space so the, the galleries become a kind of discotheque and the sculptures, the ancients become these sensual sort of dancing partiers. So it's such a beautiful um, film. So I, uh, and, um, and I just, I guess for all of us right now who are unable to visit all the museums that we love and, um, and treasure, it's just really reminds us of the special experience of coming face to face with art and museums. So with that, I just wanted to ask you if you could, Doriana, if you could start by telling us a bit about how this film came about. I understand um, it, it was an idea that you um, sort of thought about in a film workshop and then it, it, it went from there. And so we're curious about how long the film took to, um, to make, how it, it, the concept of the film evolved over the period of production, et cetera. Okay. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Buonasera. Um, thank you for having me. Um, so I tell you something. Uh, I can say that the, the idea of, of film was born uh, during my last year of uh, studying at university, where I literally fell in love with uh, uh, classical arts and uh, especially with archaeology and uh, some concept of archaeology, uh, especially relationship with gaze, uh, uh, archaeology and, uh, gay and filmic gaze. Uh, uh, at the same time, at the same moment, I was studying also the story of documentary and uh, I was discovering um, the a new possibility of, uh, of documentary, the freedom and uh, a new kind of documentary. So um, for me, it was very natural, um, can combine these two, uh, these two things uh, because I asked to myself, uh, how I can make a film uh, about archaeology, but uh, without uh, the divulgative experience, but uh, with uh, uh, only the power of the arts, and especially the classic arts that, in my opinion, she the, the, that art, this art has, has got. Um, so uh, then I have I had the possibility to develop this uh, this project, this ideal really primordial in this school, in this um, Napolitan school, it's called Film Up. And uh, I had the opportunity to write, to thinking, to research um, on the film. And so, uh, ah, and then I had the possibility when the meeting with the producer Antonella Di Nocera to present it, propose my idea to museum. And uh, the director uh, it, it was very it was very enthusiastic attention to my project. So uh, it it was very simple to to, to go in the museum very soon. And I can um, I can say that uh, the, the the first at first part at the beginning I think I think that, uh, especially um, my my focus was especially on the on the fragments no the philosophy of fragments especially uh, the fact that the 
these pieces, no, these artworks, uh, uh, came up. It's it's correct, you know. We uh, came up, for example, to, uh, from ex excavation, no? archaeological excavation, archaeological site, and I was really interested to some uh, thing sort of through something of physical, you know, material, uh, material, materialistic, no, mat materially, and. Uh, so this is, was my first idea. When I arrived in the museum, I discovered uh, a, a universe, a lot of people that work, um, a lot of things that change, changed continuously. So uh, I tried to uh, combine these two things, these two levels, no? uh, the visual aspects and the daily life of museum. Uh, you do that. Um, beautifully. How how many months did you film in in the museum? Were you in the museum filming? Uh, so I spent uh, two years to filming museum and with uh, uh, with different sessions. So first session more of studies and second session with an idea more uh, more precisely. It's correct. And uh, in totally, I, uh, uh, I spent three years of, of work with uh, post production editing. Um, I, and it shows <sighs> it's such a beautiful work of art. I, I, I'm really struck with the pacing. You know, we, we live in a time of very short attention spans. Um, and we have, can you hear me? My internet is, I think it's okay. Um, you know, a, a museum visit is often not complete without a selfie or a social media post. And you slow the tempo down to focus our minds eyes on the art, you know, in a, in a very exceptional way and um, strip away a lot of the didactic material, the scholarly material, not, you know, this is a, a Roman copy of a Greek bronze that was found this, you know, th that information is stripped away so that we really are confronted with the objects in the galleries. And um, in this focus, you force us to see, to see rather than tell us, you know, we see the passage of time with the cracks and the fading paint and the, um, the missing stone limbs and in the, in the, so quickly we're looking at ancient art, but it's through our eyes and we're confronted to, to really have to focus. And you literally have the art then speak for itself and, and the art literally speak. And so was that con that idea in your original concept evolve over time? Yeah, I think that there is in, in the film um, a scene that for me it's very symbolic and uh, has changed my relationship with the museum and with the art. And this, this scene is when the conservator in the library uh, talk about of the photography. And he, he said, he says uh, very important things. He says that museum is a space and, uh, and is a, also a light, no? There is space, there is light. And uh, I understand that uh, this is the, the very central thing of the art because uh, it's true that the art it's it's um, ever the same, no? It's these things, but everything around change continuously. And uh, I think that if we think the heart with this uh, perception, we can really uh, understand the art um, because I think that it's not important the reading of a artwork but the vision through the perception uh, it, of course it's really important also the, the basic information to know when this statue is, is discovered and, and etc but the very key of the art is the gaze and for me uh, the gaze of cinema is uh, is the key of the gaze of, of, of art. And uh, the, the other question is the, 
for the statue that speak. It's good. Okay. Sorry for my English. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, there we go. He's in the museum, I think. Um, so uh, the idea of the of giving voice uh, to the statue uh, is started um, from an archaeological uh, um, archaeological um, thing, and uh, uh, it's that the ancient Greek. Uh, they um, put on the base of the statue uh, the description of the, the artwork in first person. So uh, the statue say what she was, what she is. Um, so this thing, um, so I, I understand that for the ancient Greek uh, was really important the, the presence of the statue uh, in their life, no? The statue, they have, hasn't a, a museum. They put her, the, the artworks in the, in the play, public place, in the religious place. Uh, so they uh, imagine this statue alive. So this, for me, was a natural idea. For okay, I I, I think I, I think it's good to do. To sorry, I can say this in Italian or because it's a little bit. It's fine too. We can uh, translate. Sorry, yeah. Okay. okay. Um, quello che volevo dire è che uh, non so se è, se è capito il discorso che alla base della statua c'era questa descrizione in prima persona. Quindi erano le statue stesse a dire chi, um, chi le aveva realizzate e per quale motivo. Quindi diciamo che questo elemento mi ha ispirato a dare voce alle, alle statue. E quindi effettivamente loro stessi avevano la percezione del fatto che queste opere erano qualcosa di vivo, no? qualcosa che dovesse far parte della loro quotidianità. E, e mi sembrava... Un, un momento. Anna, do you want to translate? I think you said a lot of that so well in yeah. English, but Anna, do you want to? Yeah, I think so too. You said it exactly. <laughs> you said it pretty well. But yes, you were pointing out the fact that the statues speak in first person. So they explain them, they say who, you, who they are. Uh, and, and so that speaks, uh, the statue become uh, the, the person. That's what I, I think you, you meant to say. Exactly, yeah. It has. We have the same expression in English that first person thank too. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, and then before I see, I'm so happy to see that Antonella has joined us here. She was running a minute late. So we're about to go over to questions. Just had to ask one more question here, um, Doriana, about um, filmmakers that influenced you. And, and if you could speak a minute about maybe Roberto Rossellini, uh, Viaggio and um, the part that's filmed in the museo and then other filmmakers maybe too if you that might have influenced for this film or in general for for this, this film, film maybe yeah. okay yes uh another important director that i that uh, is inspired for me is um frederick wiseman when i when i saw national gallery I think, okay, I want to do something of, like this, uh, especially in the part of observation. I think a lot of him for this, this particularity of uh, the cinema. And uh, another film, was, another director is um, Nicolas, Nicolas Philibert, La Ville Louvre. It's another film very inspiring for me. And um, and also a film that uh, it don't talk about is not about the art, but for me it was interesting. It's uh, Only Lovers Left Alive uh, by Jim Jarmusch. Oh right. Uh, for the idea of <laughs> the vampire, I, I 
I find interesting the idea that for me the statue are like the vampires, no, that uh, they can live forever. And they have the possibility to to see something that we uh, human being haven't the possibility. It's, it's interesting with the Frederick Wiseman film, the 2014 film about the National Gallery in London, is that uh, that your film also stands in, in sharp contrast to the, that in that it's um, it it gives more space to the art and sound rather than to um, you, you know experts sort of speaking to the camera, um, which. Mm -hmm which I really loved about your film. You know, it was, it's nice in the, but, um, and, and the, um, the Rossellini film, I, I, if any of you have not seen it, I would strongly recommend to, um, going to see Viaggio in it, Italia with, and so it's a beautiful film, but. Uh, okay, well, should we, Tiziana, do you want to s ask questions? Sure, Dorian? sure. But first of all, yeah, thank you. Wanna... Thank you, Doriana, uh, and thank you, Rachel. and. And uh, benvenuta Antonella, uh, we're so happy to have you with us today. So Antonella Di Nocera is the producer of Agama. And yes, we, I mean, um, Antonella, um, I would like to ask you a few questions as well, you know, to have your um, yes, insight as a producer uh, on this documentary. And my, my first question is, um, what are what are you looking for in a filmmaker uh, or or idea when deciding whether or not to to greenlight a production, and and how did you know that this particular project was going to work? Um, well, as a start, um, thanks for this uh, occasion and thanks for showing the movie. Uh, Doriana's movie in Minneapolis for the festival and thanks to all of you who are there listening to us. Um, well, uh, as, as Doriana was saying, the film uh, came as a start, as her idea when she came to start to, for, to attend this uh, special course. We have training course for uh, documentary directors we have in the eastern suburbs of Napoli in an area where uh, I, we have been working a lot for film promotion for many years. And at one point, the, the cultural organization, which is called actually Archie Movie, after so many years working in cinema and promotion and screenings, uh, I had the idea to organize this course for documentary filmmakers. And so uh, Doriana was one of the eight, uh, eight students of the second year of this course. The course is actually very brief because it's only three months, and but it's very intense. And during during this period, the, the students come uh, to follow the course with teachers and uh, um, you know directors and other people who come. But they also have an idea of a project they want to develop. So at the end of the of the atelier, they start to develop this project, and that's where Doriana came with that idea. And after that, uh, I took it. Uh, with my company together with Ladoc, the other company, to produce it. And uh, after this long stage of studying and de development, we got uh, to a treatment, which was then uh, sent for a, an application for the Campania region to get the money for funding the movie. Because uh, of course, the talent is not enough to produce. So we found the right um, picture the right framework where to, to put this idea and this talent that Doriana has. And I'm very happy of the fact that apart from Doriana, uh, who is young and talented, we had other um, people from the troop, the crew, let's say, the people who helped there and from the assistant directors to the, uh, the, the editor, the, so the sound man, and also the compositor, composer who are all young. And, um, and I can say they're young because now I'm getting older as well. So I feel, <laughs> I feel that and the chance was given uh, to develop this. So what I, what I look in movies, it's not really something I look for, it's what I find. <laughs> I, so what I found in this project was uh, the possibility to reveal beauty through this uh, fantastic museum. And we have the director here so he can tell tell more about the museum, of course, that could reveal the museum, but also the, 
the something deep about uh, art and archaeology and philosophy to me. And so all this complex, where, where in this, in, the, in that treatment that Doriana was developing, but once we got embraced by the museum, everything had its own explanation, everything uh, found more um, roots. So all these elements together, you cannot say something, uh, one thing, never one thing in a production. The production is made on many things. At last, uh, when I propose, uh, Doriana, show, I know these actors, you know, Fabrizio Gifuni and, and Sonia Bergamasco, they are a wonderful couple and they are loving people. I have the feeling they might like the, mu the movie. So we send the movie to them and they accept it surprisingly because they are very famous actors from the Italian stage and, and filmmaking and they accept it to do the voice. So, you know, all these elements, at one point they come together and they make the piece of art. So it's, uh, so right. that's what cinema is. It's a complex of many, many, very many things. Thank you. And, and are there any, I mean, could you say more about how, you know, the whole process evolved and, and if there were any um, happy, particular happy moments or challenges that you would like to, you know, to share with us? Mm. Yes, as Doriana said, the, the process was long because from her start uh, in the class, let's say, which was uh, 2016, the course, we are in 2021. <laughs> and we, of course, we had also, a, we are also going through a pandemic here where the film went, came out, but uh, luckily enough, the film was then presented live in person in Venice last year, as you may know, in September which is like a parenthesis that looks more like a dream <laughs> rather than the real life, because then we got back to everything as it is now. Uh, the film, in, during this process, we had a lot of challenges because it was hard to find a way. The museum, is, it's enormous. It's enormous, the, the number of pieces, uh, the rooms, uh, the, the square meters, the ears, uh, the people working there, everything is very, very, a lot, you know, it's like, so how can you close all that in one hour? How can you close all that uh, in, in 70 minutes or in 50 my, um, 55 minute, minutes as it is the film now? It's only through a very, very challenging process in which you make choices. And at the end, I must say that Doriana, together with Enrica, the editor, did um, the final uh, touch to make this happen because the, the process of research was very long and it was very, I think also a training process for, for Doriana, but for us all as well, you know, we never, I've never faced a production of this kind. And, and so the challenge was every day. Of course, there were some hard moments in which we, you know, we had to find the closer of it, but I think uh, the, the real closing was found at the editing, in the editing room. And, and it was only because there was a concept uh, which uh, was rooted in Doriana and in her knowledge and in her studies before. So it all came together at that point. But it's great and it made the magic because I, I also see in the chat that there are beautiful comments um, on, the, on the film and I just wanna um, read, uh, read one uh, from Jill. Thanks so much for making this absolute gem of a film. Uh, I could honestly have watched for hours. Um, and then Jill, I'll come back to your question later on, uh, but thank you for that great comment. Um, uh, before we move to, um, to talking more about the museum, Antonella, a last question for you. Um, do you have any advice that you would like to share you know, for aspiring filmmakers to move their projects and careers forward? Um, yeah. Well, uh, what I what I always say to young people, and I actually I say it to myself as um, ever in life, since uh, we you know we, we we grow up with we grow up always in our life, even when, when we get older, we grow up by learning, we, we grow up by challenging ourselves. So I, I think the only the only important thing is to try to do what you want to really do and to face everything. Uh, in front of, of you in order to reach that achievement. Because, um, you know, at, now I'm a producer, I have many films which are, 
I can show to world sales, I can try to sell. But this, this system is very, very hard. There is no way you, you can find, uh, you can produce a, a film which is commercially valid, like valuable, like people want the film to be. But then we look for something else. We look for the idea of making the film we want to make, like Agalma. Agalma is a film we want to make, we wanted to make. Of course, it's difficult to sell with Agalma. It's difficult, but we were on TV two years, two days ago, we went on Sky. Um, so reaching people, reaching audiences is, is our value. And so what I tell to young filmmakers is to go for what you really want to do and do it with care, do it with a lot of passion, otherwise you never reach it. Thank you. And, and be, sh be certain that we will make uh, whatever we can, you know, to, to uh, continue promoting Agalma in the US. Again, we are so honored to be, you know, the first ones to bring it to the U.S., but for sure we'll continue our work and, and spread the word uh, everywhere in the U.S. So uh, now I'm happy. Thank you so much, Antonella. Um, Rachel, uh, I'll give the word again to you and we can talk more about the, the museum with um, its director, we have some, Paolo Giuliettini. We have some questions for Paolo. Thank you so much for being here. It, I know you are, must have a very busy schedule, so we're really honored to have you take part in this. And it's really, for, for a museum person, I have to say, it have every museum director in the world must want to have an El Gama to show right now when got closed and you and people of how important you are. You had tremendous force in being part of this project so that the world can enjoy your museum when it's closed. Um, First question was if you could just share with our audience a bit about the history of your museum and how it has evolved in the last five or 10 years. Uh, the Naples Museum uh, was born uh, at the end of the 80th century and uh, bring uh, together uh, the collection uh, of uh, Roman sculpture, uh, Collezione Farnese, and uh, the extraordinary discoveries of uh, Herculaneum and Pompeii. In the last uh, uh, 10 years, the museum uh, has opened its doors to the city, uh, wanted uh, to give uh, a face uh, to the staff, to the staff, uh, went to look uh, for many children in difficulty in the district of Naples. Above all, he used the innovative language such as comics, cartoons, cinema, creating links between the ancient world and the contemporary world. This is the recent history of the museum. Wonderful. And how long have you been um, the director of the museum? Um, um, and, uh, until the um, uh, 2015, uh, 20, okay, 2015. Wonderful. Wonderful. And um, has El Gama um, changed the perception of the museum either in Naples or abroad, do you think? Doriana Monaco's film uh, Agalma uh, revealed the, the secret face of the museum. Uh, she created a, a deep bond between the ancient men who created the statues and uh, those of today who admire them. Uh, cinema has often uh, had the museum uh, um, as a frame uh, or background but uh, has never made uh, the museum uh, the protagonist. Uh, with Agalma, the museum is a protagonist. I, Rachel, I can add something to that if you want, in terms of uh, the yeah. perception of people. As, um, as I was saying, we were in Venice in uh, September, then we had to do our first uh, huge screen in Napoli in the cinema and in the auditorium which actually, thanks to Paolo, has been, in, has been opened in the museum, a big screening oh, wow. room of 300 seats. And, oh, but wow. unluckily, end of October, we were all closed down again. So we never had our premiere in Napoli live. And we hope to do it in, in May, as soon as we, 
we open again. So people could see the movie online in, in two different festivals and now it was on Sky. Uh, but uh, so we don't, we don't have the real feedback of what people thought, but certainly the, um, the feedback we are having from the ones who saw it in festivals are already uh, enormous. And, uh, but I must say that uh, also to, you know, to share it with everyone that Paolo Giulierini uh, since his arrival, there has been a huge change of the perception of the museum itself, even before the, film, the movie was made. And of course, that, that, that is also the reason why we were so much embraced, as I said, by the museum at the same time. But he was giving this new, um, really a fresh, open idea of being a museum in a city like Naples. And the city really needed that. So we all must be very grateful to Paolo's ideas and, well, and way of doing since he was there. It, it's true. I, it strikes me, the, the last time I was there, I said in the summer of 2019, it was filled with people. It, I, I would think that attendance has increased dramatically in, in the last decade. Or can you speak to that, Paolo? About the attendance. Uh, the, the attendance of the gente che l'è venuta nel 2019 a Napoli e ha, ha vissuto proprio de, di persona il pubblico, yeah. la folla che c'era al museo. E mm. Quindi, però, ha capito che già da qualche anno che c'è questo questa grande crescita del pubblico. Se puoi dire qualcosa su questo, parla italiano, Paolo, che sí. poi ti, tradu ti traduce sí. anche. Parla italiano. La, mm, noi eravamo arrivati quasi ad un milione di visitatori, quindi una cifra molto importante. E avevamo visitatori da tutto il mondo, eh, dall'Asia, dal Giappone, dalla Cina, ovviamente tantissimi americani. E, mh, eravamo arrivati ad essere veramente un grandissimo museo internazionale. Oltre a questo avevamo mostre in tutto il mondo, quindi con oltre 10 milioni di visitatori di mostre di Napoli in tutto il mondo. E improvvisamente si è battuta la catastrofe del Covid. E adesso dovremo ricostruire aspetta, tutto aspetta da Aspetta che capo. traduce, Paolo. Aspetta che yeah, traduce. Okay. Should we uh, translate? Yeah, Anna, Anna Weiss, se, se puoi. Uh, io? Ah, ah pensavo Antonella. Ok, pensavo facesse Antonella. Uh, yes, so um, he said that uh, uh, they had a, a million visitors from all over the world, including many Americans and uh, every other part of the world. And uh, that included the people going to the museum, but also to the exhibitions of the museum in other, in other country. And so that brought to 10 millions of visitors overall. And then uh, uh, the pandemic struck. And so now uh, they have to uh, reconstruct to restart all over again in order to get those results. Però se posso aggiungere un'ultima frase, ehm, riapriremo il museo probabilmente ad aprile con una grande mostra dedicata ai gladiatori, perché yes. pensiamo che in questo momento, insomma, tutti quelli che hanno lavorato sulla cultura sono dei veri e propri gladiatori, quindi ci rialzeremo come coloro che combattevano nelle arene. So they will reopen in April with an exhibition which is uh, on gladiators. And this is because they represent all the people who work in the museum who have fought in order to keep everything alive. And so that's the reason of the exhibition. And it will be an amazing exhibition. <laughs> um, well, that, that's so wonderful. Congratulations on that. And it's something for us to all travel to and look forward to. Tian, do you think we should try to open up the questions to our audience? Sure, sure yeah. And we, ha we have a few questions in the chat, so I'll try to them in order. Um, first of all, Liz, there is a comment from Pierana that I would like to read. Uh, Pierana says, I loved uh, when one of the people in the film says that people go to a museum not to learn as much as for pleasure. So yes, let's remember that too. <laughs> Um, and Jill, um, getting back to your question, would you like to unmute and ask your question directly to Doriana? Uh, I, I read the... Uh... Sure, so I'll say out loud how much I love this film. It was just such a gem. And honestly, uh. <clears throat> I was like, oh, you know, I, I've watched Frederick Wiseman's work before and I was like, 
late at night and I was watching on my phone and I still could have watched for like two more hours. It was just such a treat. Um, but I'm curious if you felt like, um, you know, you have more to do on this subject of classical art. Um, like, would you, would you be pursuing a, another film about classical art, maybe at another institution or, or just um, a documentary about other types of art at other institutions? Or do you feel like you kind of said your piece with this? Thank you, Jeanette. Doriana, se vuoi rispondere in italiano, fai pure, come, come preferisci. I, I don't know if I understand. Uh, it, if I am... Asking, oh, okay, okay. I, about, the, you know, your next project, do you want to continue making films about classical antique art, about maybe other museums, or do you have other... Are, have you said your piece? Is this your statement on your film on classical art and you want to do a different subject? Uh, uh, I uh, think that I won't uh, change totally my, my focus in the next project, but it's true that I have a, in, my intention is the created a relationship with the art in general, especially visual arts in, in the film. So maybe my next film is not about another museum or another place of art, but I hope that there is a lot of the art and especially um, the visual art, of course, yeah. It's one of my most uh, interests. I loop in saying that uh, as a producer that if we want, uh, if uh, if we find a way to find more, to produce more movies about more museums, we will be happy to do a series. <laughs> 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 Doriana's commitment uh, will be um, as well. <laughs> she can do a project and this other project. <laughs> Would would be nice to bring an Italian crew to a to a U.S. museum. So, <laughs> fun. We can Great. establish a format. <laughs> Grazie, Doriana. And Doriana, there is a, um, another question for you from Linda. Linda, I don't know if you would like to unmute or otherwise, I'm I'm happy to read your your question di directly to Doriana. So maybe I'll read it. Uh, so Doriana, no, Linda is asking, uh, what inspired you to become a film director? Uh, what? I can't say this in Italian. Yeah, go ahead. Si, si, vai pure in Italian. In Italian, bene. Grazie. Ma in realtà non c'è qualcosa in particolare che, che mi ha ispirato, semplicemente a un certo punto ho cominciato a guardare film, tantissimi film, e mi sono interrogata su cosa accadesse dietro, quindi ho cominciato a guardare, non mi bastava più guardare i film, ma guardavo anche come facevano i film e ho ho deciso così un giorno che volevo fare anch'io questo, semplicemente ma non c'è stato un episodio specifico. Ecco. Sicuramente ho visto tantissimi film. So there, uh, there's nothing particular that inspired me. I started to watch movies, a lot of them, and I, I wondered, I started to wonder what was happening behind the scene and then I decided to, to go for that, but not specific episode or reason. Grazie. Um, and grazie to Anna who is helping us with the Thanks. translation. Um. <laughs> um, someone is asking, is it still on Sky? I would, I would love for friends in Italy to be able to see it. And I think Antonella, you answered that, uh, that the film should be on demand on Now TV and in a little time on Nexo Digital. Okay, perfect. Is there, please? I, I've not checked if it's on Sky Art on demand, uh, if Sky Art has got on demand as well, but surely it's on this Tibu called Now TV. And from the middle of March, it will be on a new platform dedicated to artworks, which is Nexo Digital in Italy. 
which is only done on. That kind of brings up a question, Antonella, that I want to ask you, which is, you know, we're in such a strange time um, with COVID and movie theaters shuttered and it's so difficult to release such, you know, films at this time for producers and filmmakers. But at, on the other hand, you have access to audiences through, like here we're meeting today. Um, we had to do all the, the Italian Film Festival this year was watched streaming at home, which was for some people who have, you know, difficulty getting out or really busy with raising a family. Um, it, it provides an opportunity to see films that on your TV screen that we would never see. So do you see this era of, of streaming and TV as a threat to filmmaking or as an opportunity? Mm -hmm. Well, it's a, it's a very complicated answer to give <laughs> the, because um, there is an enlargement of audiences uh, in terms of you know, the ones who just are more into using streaming as they were before. And this is of course enlarged, but th there is also um, a total uh, <laughs> uh, dismantling of the habit to go into movie theaters, which is a risk, which is a real risk to me. I mean, our movies, if you see it on a big screen, it's another movie. The cinematic of a, a four, 4K digital camera set uh, after three years working in a museum is a total, is, to, is, is missing when you go and watch it on a screen. Of course, in, there are lots of people who are organizing a screening room in their house, like uh, putting a screening projector in, on a white wall. I know, I have friends who are doing that. They are like reproducing the experience of cinema in their own house. But this is a risk. I think the community, uh, watching film as a community, breathing the same air <laughs> as we do in film theaters, it's another experience compared to what. So on one side, I'm a, you know, I, I, have, a, I have a sort of um, myself, it's a personal, it's a personal uh, uh, attitude. I, I'm very tired of streaming and everything. And uh, I know we have Berlin now in, I, I have accreditation with Berlin and I cannot see films in Berlin where I would see them in the 500 meter square screening rooms in a, in a small P, P computer at home. So this has to be changed. It's a phase we have to go through. And, uh, but of course there is a chance that uh, like festivals can have an enlargement of their audience moving, adding it, adding the streaming to the actual physical possibilities. So that means that people who cannot go can stay at home, but surely the physical event has to be uh, brought back. Yeah, and I can only agree with what you're saying, Antonella. And, and, and of course, I think we all miss being in the same room and, and having the movies on the, on the big screen and just, just hearing and feeling the reactions of everyone in the room, uh, sharing the emotions. I mean, that's something we really miss and, and we, we definitely look forward to to bring the 2022 Italian Film Festival back in the in the theater next year, um, but yes, I mean talking about festivals, I for now it seems like we're we're moving towards a kind of a hybrid format for the future, so in person in the theater as well as online. So, but I know I know that's that's good. it's all still a big question mark for now, but yeah. Anyway, we're looking forward to, to go back on the big screen for sure. It's but we'll need a double crazy. budget for doing that, I think, because you need double crew. You need uh, you know pers people working in the theater and people working on the on the stream. It, it adds to the challenges. Yes, I agree. Yeah. yeah, but we'll handle it. We have a question here for Paolo Tatiana. Do you want to read it or or does Sandra want to ask it? Sandra, see. Sí. Sí. Paolo, um, my question is about the museum. Uh, love the people, love to see the people that work there. How many people do you work? Do they, are they there on a daily basis or monthly basis? I don't know. What do they do and how, you know, it's such a, almost like a dance that they were doing. They're so well, uh, they can work so well together. So tell us about the people that work there. 
quindi quante persone lavorano con me e, e diciamo il... i loro ruoli quello che sì, fanno sì, sì. Sì, sì. Sono tutti i giorni non lo so okay. sì dunque il, il museo è composto da 150 persone eh, sono molti custodi eh, poi ci sono molti restauratori eh, ci sono archeologi e poi c'è una parte amministrativa e un'altra parte invece lavora alla comunicazione del museo eh, queste persone sono eh, quelle che appaiono per la prima volta quasi nel film eh, mentre normalmente il pubblico non li conosce insomma tramite i custodi quindi questa è stata un'occasione speciale okay, so, uh, there are about 150 people Yes, I'm on mute. There are about 150 people, and those include many custodians, of course, archaeologists, administration, the communication, and the, those who go for the renovations as well of the pieces of art. And those people are the ones that for the first time appear, so that are put out there, and uh, um, so they become the, the, the protagonist of the, of the scene. Questo è un, è un grande merito del, del film perché, eh, diciamo così, eh, in Italia non c'era stata mai questa attenzione eh, al, alle, alle persone che lavorano nei beni culturali. C'è sempre una grande attenzione alle opere. È stata una sorta di cortocircuito, di rivoluzione. E devo dire che ha contribuito molto anche a eh, scatenare l'orgoglio delle persone che hanno lavorato nel museo, che si sono sentite proprio parte di una squadra e per la prima volta hanno veramente eh, considerato il museo la loro vera casa. Yeah, so um, this is a big merit of the movie because there has never been so much attention um, of the people. Uh, to the people who work in the museum rather to the art. So it's a revolution. And uh, um, it uh, contributed, so the movie contributed to the pride of the people who work there. They felt as if they were more of a team. Uh, so for the first time, they really felt very motivated into their, the work they do. Hello, did you ever have any hesitation about granting Doriana complete access She's there when the lights go out. She's there in, in storage. Did you, did the access change over the time of the film, Paolo, or did you grant free access straight away? L'accesso al museo è cambiato durante le riprese? Oppure L'accesso... La chess, do you mean of the people, uh, Rachel? No, 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 and her team. Her, Yeah. No, scusa, eh, Paolo, la, scusa, posso pa la domanda era se tu eh, quando hai dato l'accesso, cioè ti ha, che effetto eh, ti ha fatto dare l'accesso, cioè è stato facile sempre dare l'accesso a Doriana a tutti i luoghi, i depositi, accendere e spegnere le luci, cioè questa particolare libertà che le hai data, l'ha conquistato o è da subito che <ride> gliel'hai data? Una cosa del genere. Ma devo dire che Doriana è una sorta di presenza angelica nel museo e quindi oramai noi la consideriamo parte dell'allestimento per me. Quindi è un angelo, un angelo del museo, ok, è parte di Lei, come dire, si aggira insieme ai, ai suoi colleghi, ai suoi, ai suoi collaboratori, insomma, con, con grande delicatezza e... E quindi, come dire, la sensazione era proprio di avere una sorta di eh, protezione di persona che in qualche modo documentava, ma sempre con grande stile, insomma, con grande, eh, quasi, quasi sorvolando sopra le opere. Allora eh, questa idea ci ha fatto compagnia, insomma, per, per quasi due anni, insomma. E, anzi, adesso ne, ne sentiamo quasi la mancanza, quindi... Perché non pensare in futuro anche a qualcosa di nuovo? So she moved, if I, and please help anybody. She moved very, very tactfully about, around the area of the museum. And so they got so used to that, that they are, they are missing her. They are missing <laughs> her very much uh, uh, now that she's not uh, around uh, anymore because of her ability to, be, to move around so gently. 
and they and they look forward to another project, right? Uh, exactly. The museum. So yeah. Thank you so much. Um, anyone else who would like to, you know, even feel free to to share your impression if you've seen Agarma. Uh, uh, and if you if you have not seen it yet, I hope uh, you will you will have a chance to catch it before the end of the festival. Um, so yes, anyone else? Feel free to unmute directly and just ask. Your I'll question. jump in. I'll jump in then. I told you, to Rachel. So I'm somebody who goes to museums a lot. I used to work at the Museum of Contemporary Art in Chicago. But I feel like after seeing this film, I I will never look at sculpture the same. And I have a new appreciation for sculpture as an art form. There was the professor or the docent who said to his students that, you know, ancient sculpture didn't have the advantage, or sculptors didn't have the advantage of, say, film to create a sense of a temporal narrative. And um, look at the, and he said, look at the way these artists were able to convey action, the passage of time something happening and it's something I never ever considered. So I found it very humbling and um, just fascinating. And I, I, I told Rachel that my next visit to the Minneapolis Institute of Art is gonna be straight to sculpture and nothing else. So thank you for that. I don't know if that was intentional, but, but I really just learned something extraordinary. Thank you so much, Sally. I have to ditto that. I, that one idea really stuck with me that at the, idea of like time and sequencing just from like walking around these sculptures. I've been thinking about that all day. I, I really have to do that. That was a new and big idea for me. So yay, thank you. Did that yeah. part of the film, if you all remember, the camera is, is focused on the Hercules Farnese and you see this hulking man and then you see the Nimian lion um, pelt. So Doriana shows, so that you know that he's completed his first labor. And then the camera comes around and then you see the apples of Hesperides in his arm behind his back. So you realize that he's completed his 11th um, labor. So, so the story is told in the round and, and the film completes what the, what the, the speaker is saying about temporal um, storytelling. It's a beautiful passage in the film, Doriana. Thank you. Okay. Well, Thank it's you. great to hear people. It's so great to do, hear people from the art. I'm reading also the the, the messages here, saying uh, what I think Doriana, in in a sense, uh, um, really succeed doing the fact of giving it, like she was saying before, that when she discovered that the gaze of cinema can be the gaze of art. So in in hearing what you are saying, it, it means that that idea is there. You know that through the gaze of cinema. Uh, like Sally was saying, she could see, she can watch statues in a different way now. And that's the case that cinema as a mean uh, used by Doriana is giving to spectators. So that's the best, uh, the best fulfillment that you, we, could, we could reach. So thank, thanks a lot. Thank you. And uh, indeed, we have beautiful comments in the chat. Michael is saying, thank you for the wonderful film, beautifully done appreciated it so much. Uh, and Elizabeth says, thank you so much for this conversation. The film was so beautiful and inspiring. I echo what Sally said. I work in an art museum and feel like I'm bringing a new lens to our galleries and collections. So yes, and I think we can all, I mean, I think the two messages for to, to kind of end this conversation is um, make sure you, you watch Galma and make sure you go back to museums. Uh, I know the uh, Minneapolis Institute of Art is open. Uh, and maybe Rachel, you can say a few more words about that. You know, how, how do, do, I think people need to sign up, right? To, re to register ahead of time. We're open to capacity. So it's, it's very safe for those who feel safe to go inside. There's very few people and you have to have a reservation. It's limited, I believe, to 150 visitors. Um, and it's open Thursday through Sunday at this time. And we hope to expand our capacity in the coming weeks. So please come look at the sculpture. It's not, you're not, yeah. That's probably well, a good place to end. 
I think we can, um, I mean, this was a beautiful uh, conversation. Thank you very much. Uh, again, I would like to thank our guests for today, Doriana, uh, Monaco Paolo, Giulierini and Antonella Di Notria for being with us today. And, and uh, again, it's such an honor to have you here and, and to show Agalma. And thank you, Rachel, uh, as well, for helping me moderate uh, this discussion. Um, and yeah, again, people go back to museums, watch films. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, just a reminder that the Italian Film Festival uh, is open until Thursday, this Thursday, March 4th. Uh, you can buy tickets until midnight. And then once you click on the watch button, you'll have 48 hours to complete the viewing of the, the films. Uh, so again, thank you to everyone. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Yeah, I think we can yeah. all unmute and clap our hands to, to say thank you to our guests. Thank you. Thank you. It's a very emotional you, listening to all these words. It's beautiful words. Um, I'm very happy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Ciao a tutti. Ciao. 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 Thanks.